Hi, um, welcome back. First of all, I'd like to say that I have not heard from Anderson Cooper, and I have not heard from Howard Stern. No surprise there, but I will continue to try to reach out to them. The second thing that I would really like to start out with is to tell you that I had a comment that stated that I come off like I'm saying, oh, poor me, poor pit pitiful, pitiful me. You need to feel sorry for me. You need to help me. That is not my intention. And if that is how you are viewing my videos, I do apologize. That is not my message. I am thankful for this experience in the respect that it has made me a stronger person and I have gained knowledge that I would never have known without this. This may not be your typical case, but if it has happened to you, we need to get together and we need to fight together. We need to get to the lawmakers. We need to have this revised and we need to do it as a group to get our voices heard and our rights protected. So let's get started with the real first part of this video. Today's topic is going to be the first lawyer. Please watch and listen and see if this has happened to you or anyone else that you may know. All right, you're sitting in your living room. Every day, normal day, doorbell rings. Your spouse says, you should answer that, it's for you. So you get up, you know, I think in the back of your mind, why the heck would he say that? But anyway, you go to the door and lo and behold, surprise, someone hands you divorce papers. Well, didn't see that coming. There's nothing you can do except accept them. So you shut the door, thank the person to shut the door. Go in and confront your spouse. And the, the story is on. So, now, out of the blue, clear, clear blue sky, comes a doorbell again, and you answer, and you're served with restraining orders. These restraining orders say to you that you are not allowed to take your child or children from the state in which you reside or the county from which you reside. You cannot leave without the courts saying yes or the non-custodial parent's approval. This gets interesting. Now, what are you going to do? You got to get a lawyer. Well, you're not familiar with any lawyers in divorce laws or anything like that because it's not something you ever thought about. So you just kind of have to randomly pick somebody. So you decide, well, I'll pick this law firm. They're well known. And so, you know, you're thinking I'll probably get good representation. And you start it with a very young lawyer, but you're not worried because he's got the firm behind him. I want to tell you right now, wrong. That's really not going to make any difference. Well, maybe not in all cases, but here's how we get, here's how it all goes down. So you have a lawyer. Um, you go to court, you lose. The judge says you are not leaving. This uh, report reads, not at this time. The heck does that mean? Not at this time. Of course you ask your lawyer that and he doesn't know either. So, well, okay. It's been a year and a half now with this lawyer. All of a sudden, he's not taking your phone calls. He's not talking to you. He's avoiding you. And you're paid. You're paid up. I, you don't owe him any money. So why would he be avoiding you? Finally, you, can, you get through to his office. And he tries everything he knows how to do not to meet with you. Finally, you break him down. 
and he agrees to meet with you. So off to the office you go. You get into his office, you sit down, you notice a paper in front of him. He starts to scoot that paper toward you. And you say, well, what is this? He said, I have already sent this to you in the mail, but since you're here, I'm going to give you a copy. Now bear in mind, you had no forewarning. You have no idea what this paper's gonna say. You look down, it's his letter of resignation. You look at that lawyer. You're confused. Why? What brought this on? I don't understand. Well, the lawyer has to have a legitimate reason to withdraw from your case. So, what he writes as his reasoning is the client, attorney, trust has been broken. You are just like, what are you talking about? And you tell him, I, I don't think so. You know, I still trust in you. I still have faith in you. And he's not going to give you much more than that. And, and you're just like, really, I don't want to lose you as a lawyer. What, what's going on here? And he says, this has already been sent to the judge. It's a done deal. All right, while you're sitting in his office, and, you know, it's a private setting. The door is closed. It's, uh, a, you know, an appointment between you and your attorney. So now bear in mind, you're paying for this meeting. And <laughs> you're paying to get a copy of that sheet of paper that lets you know he's resigning, that you had no idea in your coming in your mailbox. So... You have a witness there sitting there with you. And so finally the, this lawyer just kind of sits back in his big old cushy lawyer chair, throws his hands up in, a in the air and says, and I quote, I'm tired of dealing with that opposing attorney. And I am tired of dealing with that judge. Not being able to get through to them, speak with them. So you think, hmm, okay, but that's not your fault. So this witness sitting there turns to the lawyer and says, now let me get this straight. And I quote, your client has just paid you $9,000 in services. You haven't accomplished a darn thing. And you're done. He looks you square in the eyes, says, yes. Hmm. In your mind, you know there's more to the story than that. So, you just kind of, you take that all in. And... Of course, you're wondering what your next steps are going to be because now you are without a lawyer because the judge already got it and it's going to go before the judge in just a matter of days. Funny how they can get those appointments real quick, but other appointments they can't. So you're in awe, but what are you going to do? You have to leave, you have to accept it, you have to move on. But still, you're bearing in mind, this man has done nothing for your case. Now, please let me back up one moment and say, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yes, he did do one good thing. He had the non-custodial parent removed from the home in which they were residing in. So, if that was worth $9,000, well, then I guess... We got our money's worth, but eh, I don't quite think so. <laughs> Anyways, eh, you know, too bad, so sad. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to tell you. The next video 